Hey, ContraPoint or um, Nick. Um, I see. I was gonna make a response video to your video here. Um, I liked your last two videos, um, and um, they're both kind of about um, objective scientific realism and kind of the problems with it. And so, yeah, I just thought I would make a video response. Um, let's see. Um, oh. Um, yeah, so the life world. You were talking about the life world in this last video. And yeah, that's a, um, I think, you know, that's a good um, a point you brought up. Kind of, uh, I think you're getting that from Husserl. Kind of, the, I think the Lebensbelt, is how you pronounce it in German or something. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, objective scientific realism, I think, I think can uh, become kind of naive unless people realize that there's a life world and there's a context for which all knowledge kind of uh, comes into being. Um, um, so I think, yeah, the life, uh, the life world is kind of the backdrop for which all knowledge comes into existence. And, um, if you don't sort of recognize that there's the life world, I think there's a danger of kind of falling into sort of this objective scientific realism, which can kind of become naive. Um, so, uh, let's see, actually I recently read this book here. Let's see if I can show it to you. Sorry. Um. Introduction to Phenomenology. Sorry, there's a bunch of noise here. There's some construction. So, um, and um, I, I read this chapter on Marilu Ponty, and it was a great chapter. Um, and there's just a couple quotes I wanted to quote by Ponty here. It says, the first one says, Marilu Ponty's later philosophy was particularly concerned with studying how the other is experienced by us, by us, both in our visual scene of other bodies. And our, and our encounter with others in language. For Marilu Ponty, here developing a theme of Hegel and coming close to the views on language expressed by later Heidegger, the other is already within us when we use language. Marilu Ponty is now analyzing the nature of communication beyond the realm of perception. He is now interested in the manner in which signs symbol, and symbols take us far beyond the world of our immediate perception. So, um, yeah, I think first is like, how does language, um, I don't know, I guess how does language sort of mediate all our knowledge? Um, I think, I don't know if I would call myself, what is it, like a, a linguistic uh, constructivist? I don't know, linguistic, what is the word, linguistic, linguistic constructivist or something? I don't know exactly. Uh, what the word would be, but like Richard Rorty and the philosophy of the mirror of nature, I think sort of correspondence theories of uh, of a uh, truth are uh, are kind of naive, you know. And I think sometimes objective scientific realism can kind of get in this correspondence theory of truth, and I think that's kind of um, I think that's kind of philosophically naive. And then the second quote was, um, "See, we can never grasp the world in its totality, but we grasp." It according to the mode in which we inhabit it. Humans can only understand the world as it is revealed and uncovered to humans with our specific forms of being in the world. There is no doubt that Merleau Ponty was convinced that our experience of objective things in the world was deeply conditioned by the kind of perceptual apparatus we have. If we were creatures with eyes on either side of our heads, there is little doubt that we would propose very different ontologies. So I think, um, I think, yeah, I think that's really true. I think, you know, our body, uh, phenomenology of perception by Ponty, uh, Marilu Ponty, I think, you know, our bodies condition us to how we experience the world. So I think the scientific method does a good job of weeding sort of out those, our biases, you know, like how our uh, organs are placed, but it doesn't do a complete job. Oh, like Thomas Nagel, what it's like to be a bat. Um, you know, you have to be a bat to understand what it's like to be a bat. And so to sort of sort of try to have an objective scientific knowledge about batness without being a bat is kind of, I don't know if you can do that really. Um, so I think, uh, I guess my thing would be here for the people is how do these two quotes about from Marilu Ponty, or not these aren't quotes specifically from Ponty, but quotes about Ponty, Marilu Ponty, how do these relate to sort of how we view the world and how uh, all the science, I'm not knocking science, science is a great method. Science is a you know fantastic method for getting at things and it works really well. 
but to think that it's getting that pure fact, I mean, human beings are historically and temporally conditioned, you know, we're being in the world, like Heidegger would say, you know, so I think if we forget that, I think we can kind of, I don't know, get hubristic about our, yeah, we can get kind of arrogant or hubristic about our own sort of, uh, like epistemological uh, awareness or something. So anyways, uh, I like your videos a lot. And uh, all right, thanks.